Hey guys, welcome back to the TV shop. Um, here it is Labor Day and I really ain't got nothing going on so I'm kind of bored. Uh, I'm out in the shop here uh, messing around so let's see what we got. First off, there's the uh, Clinton, the uh, Dumont right there, the RA-164. It's finished, it's sitting over there out of the way. Uh, here's the RCA 25-inch uh, RCA CTC-25. It's I'm waiting on me to find a picture tube for it. If I can find a good picture tube for that, this thing's going to be a great looking set. Uh, so, waiting on a CRT. It's a 25XP22. If anybody knows where I can find one, let me know in the comments. So, what we got on tap today is a RCA. RCA branded uh, video monitor, of all things. It's a, uh, I don't know. About a 21 inch, I would imagine. I hadn't measured it yet. Let me see here. Yeah, 21. 21 EYP4 uh, CRT in it. So that's a 21 inch monitor. Uh, it's got its RCA badge. As you can see, the RCA font right here. Uh, it's really cool. Keep you guys as. But it's RCA badged. It's a uh, MI26143-C uh, type TM8CC utility monitor. Uh, come around here a little bit. There's a badge, another RCA badge right there. They're very proud of this. However, it was made by Conrad. Conrad Industries. Um, not sure if that's a serial number or not right there 47187 I'm not sure the vintage of this uh, let's see I can't find a original tube in this thing <laughs> but anyhow uh, it's a friend of mine's he uh, chief engineer for Canoe TV in uh, Monroe Louisiana and uh, this thing is I've been working for uh, the company I work for uh, for 12 years, 12 plus years, and uh, every time I go down to the transmitter, I have a FM transmitter, his TV transmitter site down in Riverton. And anyway, I've seen this television. It's in a, it's got a big, big square metal cabinet that this goes in. It's it's uh, it's over there in the red building. Uh, we don't need that for what we're doing here. But anyway. Um, it's been sitting there forever that I can remember and he asked me if I would take a look at it if I could get it working he would put it in his uh, museum he's got a museum that he has for the TV station over there uh, anyway um, it's missing the horizontal output tube which goes inside this right here horizontal output tube was busted um, this thing is full of bumblebee capacitors so what I'm going to do, it had horizontal drive. I had this, I had tested this thing not long ago, kind of evaluated it. So we're going to do it again because I honestly don't remember, you know, what I, what I found, what I didn't. So let me get you set up. Let's, uh, let's uh, see if this thing's going to live. All right, everybody's here. Let's get a little light on the subject. Almost had this shot right, and I remembered. Oh, I need some extra light on here. Duh! All right. Now I can illuminate the meter. There's the meter. Got my trusty old Simpson out. I triple it out here. The model 630PL. Here's the TV. Um, I got it fairly balanced on this uh, almost too narrow <coughs> excuse me almost too narrow um, cart I'm gonna have to modify it anyway I've got it plugged into my isolated uh, my isolated uh, variable AC power supply so I don't even have a dim bulb on it so we're just gonna start it out we're just gonna start it out about 50 volts Right now at 50 volts, it's drawing about two five amps, about a less than a quarter amp. And 
Remember where the main power supply is, and that looks like right there. Oh, your guess is as good as mine. Let's see, that's 250 volt scale. We got about 30 volts right there. Got to left several modifications to this thing. Oh, here's the filter choke, which is very banded right here. You can see it. Let me point you up a little bit there. There we go. Mind y'all's way. All right. Well, that's the filter choke. That's how you can tell where their main filters are. Black wire right there, so this must be the main one. Like I say, we've got probably, let's drop it down to 50 volts. So that's saying, oh, I got it on AC. Good Lord, I got that on AC. Yeah, that's better. I wonder why it was reading so strange. Now we've got it on 250 volt scale. I've got about 160 volts uh, DC right there. And my output is only 55, so let's run it up to about 70. Joel's drawing, not drawing a whole lot. We're up 200 volts, B plus. See no smoke yet. Let's see, here's a bunch of filters here. We've got voltage circulating in this thing. Well, I guess we'll bring out the other scope. And which I should have already had. Let me bring out my oscilloscope. Let's look for drive. Alrighty. Turn the viewfinder around. We got the secret weapon right here. Got my yet another piece of test equipment that I've got. I think I did a video restoration on this about a year ago. Anyway, it's a Syncor SC61. So I'm going to get down here and let's just look. Here's our horizontal output. The tube's not in there. So, horizontal output's not in there. I gotta find, this is probably drive right here. What do you think? Yeah, no, that's not drive. Maybe this is. Yeah, there we go. Let's see. Bring this up. All right, let's get my calibration. Let me get my time base. Uh, let's see. Digital real. Let's see. AC coupling. Sync it. There we go. Let's see. Volts peak to peak. That's times 10. That's 14.9 volts peak to peak. So we do have a horizontal drive signal right there. Bring it on up. We got it back to 100 volts. We should have around 40 something, and we are. Bring it down a little bit. This is actually a really cool scope. Now that's good drive. That's 63 volts peak to peak drive right there. Let's see if I could figure out where the horizontal hold is. I have no idea. Did it in vertical horizontal hole? Here we go. Vertical. Yeah, it' a little noisy, but it works. See what the frequency is. Look at there, 15, 15, 750. So we do have horizontal drive. I can find cock picking control again. I think the control is a little dirty, but there you are. It's got to drive. That's a good thing. I want to make drive when we put a horizontal output tube in there. We want to make dang sure it has drive. Let me try to find a vertical output now. And I'm not really seeing where it should be. Let's 
see, there's that 6CG7. This horizontal output, I mean the vertical output transformer right there, so there's the yoke right there. I'm trying to see that red wire, let's see here. Seven. I don't know what XV is. Really not a hundred percent sure. This looks like the vertical section right here. Or it could be horizontal. That could be horizontal. Yeah. That's probably horizontal. There's the integrator right here. That's usually where your sink is. Let's have another look at it. Twelve eighty seven six C G seven six C B six there. Six A and eight. Here's the audio. Oh, here's vertical feedback right there. I bet you that's the output right there. There you go. Six AQ five. So let's see. 6AQ5 right there. Let's see. Got something there. Let's turn that and scan. There we go. We dominoed. There we go. There's your vertical. We have vertical. If I adjust a vertical hole. So we do have horizontal drive and vertical drive. So, how about we turn it off? We're going to run it about 110. Let's go ahead and shut it down. Let's check that B plus. Let's see, let's see, where's the B plus at? Uh, here we go. B plus is going down to a safe level. So let's uh, pause you a minute. I'll put the uh, horizontal output in here and uh, see what happens. Okay, I've just put the horizontal output in here and I looked, saw something very familiar right here. Look at this flyback. It's got the same design and pinouts that that Dumont flyback had right there. That's amazing. Looked kind of worse for wear. I bet you it's the same flyback. Well, anyway, here we go. Applying power. Will it work? Will it blow up? Will it red plate? Horizontal output tube is lighting. Damper tube is lighting. Look. Got something. A lot of brightness. Whew. Light. That is weird. I say we have filter power supply issues. Bracky up here over there. That's what it actually looks like. Trapezoid. Let's look at the auxiliary brightness.
horizontal output should be happy not red plate drawing a lot of current I don't know what the B plus is I mean the uh, high voltage is I haven't measured it yet let's get our meter right oh blah get our mirror Turn it around. There we go. Oh, yeah. That's better. What an odd looking waveform, but it does work. Let's see what happens. blow it up what we're gonna do and careful with that voltage and I think this thing needs a bunch of caps at least the flyback's good at least it is right now let me uh see if I can inject some video Let's see how would I do that? Let's see. Blah 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 video video video. Vertical home what's comes on in it. I don't know if this will do it or not. Let's see here. It's plain old video. Huh. I don't really have a way to generate video. That's interesting brightness boy I tell you all the way down I'm actually surprised it works as good as it does. Let me see if I can come up with a way to put uh, video in this thing. All right, I got video popped in here from kind of jury rigged. It wants to do something. Let's see vertical height. It's just very flaky. It does show some video. It's just very, very flaky. I think this thing needs about a hundred capacitors. I haven't looked for a schematic yet. I've got to look it up under Conrad because I ain't found nothing on RCA. Oh, there, there we go. Tempted to just go in here and dump some capacitance in there. Let's do it the old-fashioned way. That's how we used to do it in the old TV days. Let's go over here. This is what's always been fun. And we get to do it together, as Mr. Carlson likes to say. We're going to do this together. Yeah! Basically, what I'm going to do, I can get this cooperated. What we used to do in the old days is take a capacitor. This is about, should be an 80 at 4.5. Shouldn't be no more than that. And we used to go in here and just jump capacitors and we see what happens. Somewhere in here. I think that's a voltage doubler. I'm trying to find out where the other side of the stupid filter go. 
Looks like it right there. Doesn't act like it's got any voltage on it. I need to find a voltage source. There's a hundred capacitors in here. There we are. Ooh, thing had a full charge, didn't it? <laughs> yes, sir. -y. That's just what you do. Let's see. Well, that's kind of odd. Could be the capacitors are okay. Boy, it was loud. Horizontal linearity, horizontal width. I bet you we got some bad caps in there. So let's get a tuning adjustment. Something to tweak on with a little bit here. Yeah, yeah, old broken one. I don't think this is going to do any good. No, wrong one. Got to reach over here and grab my cotton picking diddle sticks. See what the uh, horizontal drive looks like again. And that should have came from right there. Boy, it didn't like that, did it? Yeah, I'm pretty sure we got the bastard bad in this thing. Yeah, it didn't like that scope probe being on there. See? Well, I'm pretty sure we got some filters or some some of these uh bumblebees are bad in here but CRT's got life in it at least seems to uh, flyback's good and all that seems to be good so I guess I shut it off and see if I can test a bunch of capacitors so I'll uh, go from there Okay, I had the power turned off, unplugged, got all my cables unplugged from it. Um, anyway, um, like I said, it's just full of bumblebees. I mean, full. I mean, let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Just at this stage. All right, let's see. 12, 13, that I see, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 24 that I count. That, that's a lot of caps. That's a lot of bumblebees. So, we approve the sets worthy of re uh, restoration. That's pretty much what this video is about. I do not have a schematic for it yet. I'm about to go get on the internet see if I can find it. I was looking right here. These two capacitors here. That used to be right there. And they just uh, this is what these two are about. That capacitor has been cut loose. These apparently are what these are. So, anywho, well built machine, well built uh, monitor. Really nice to get this thing going. So, I'm going to play around with the capacitors here. When I find some notable stuff, I'll let you know. 
But the big problem with this is, is my sin course got a problem. And I've just been really, just really, 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 really not ready to jump into this thing. Let's go to all other caps. And we're going to do 100. Let's see, let's clear that. 0 0.04. Four, uh, what do we do? Five zero five zero uh, microfarad, and we're gonna go to. Let's do twenty volts. Watch this. All right, we're gonna do leakage. See how the leakage bar goes all the way up, and it'll show you infinite, greater than twenty meg. Okay, that's that's what it's supposed to do. Now let's go up to one hundred volts. Here we go. Here's what it does there. See where it goes up, steps back a little bit, it keeps falling down. That's the problem. Measures capacitance fine. It just does not do a leakage test. I've just been chicken shit, pardon the language, to open this. I got the schematic. I've had it open and I've looked. Didn't really see nothing out of the ordinary, but I didn't have a manual on it. I found one, a nice gentleman online sent me one. So I'm going to get into this. I just, I was going to do it today. I just didn't, wasn't ready for that yet. Anyway, in the meantime, we'll use the old trusty uh, Heathkit C3 here. It'll do the same thing. All I'm looking for is leakage. And uh, so I'm just going to start, I'm just going to start clipping and testing. That's all I'm going to do. I'm going to clip. And test and uh, that's a 200 volt cap uh, let's see here one two three that's a seven I had to look this up there's a chart that you look these up with I know that the red band I'll tell you what, let's do it this way I'll show you a little gizmo I got really cool little dude how did it cold molded tubulars? Look, here we go. Capacitor indicator. This is so cool. So let's see, who do we want to start off with? Look like brown. Let me get the scope out of the way. Let me get this over here where we plug it in where we can see. Yeah, that one there is kind of tough to see. But anyway, I'm just going to... I'm just clipping the leads. I'm going to clip the leads right where I can solder them back on. And we just test. But what I need to figure out what the voltage is on them, like this bad boy right there. So we bring our leads over here. We'll turn on the uh, CT. Doesn't really matter about polarity. None of that nonsense. That looks like, let me get an alcohol pad. That's the best way to see what these things look like. Here we go. Ready? Yeah, we'll clean it up a little bit. I don't know if that's brown or orange. Pretty big capacitor though, so that one, two, three, that fifth band, whoop, get off here. Fifth band, one, two, three, fourth band, fifth band right here. Fifth band is uh, blue, that should be a 600 ohm or 600 volt capacitor. Yep.
Yep, blue is six. So that's a 600 volt capacitor. So let's just bring this up. 450 volts. Let's do leakage. Look at there. That sucker's. I'm going to drop it down to 150. 250. 250 volt. Uh, see that capacitor is leaky. See the eye on it right there? That's a bad cap right off the bat. That should be a 600 volt cap. Here's one down here that looks really suspect. Uh, so, if I can reach in here ever so gently. I got the coffee jitter. This in here, one thing I learned from, uh, uh, hell, what's that guy's name? Mr. Carlson. There's two different kinds of these here, molded caps right here, bumblebees. Some of them have these little spouts on them right here. These little tabs right here. Matter of fact, this one's more of it right here. Let me show you a little bit. Better. Some of them has these and some of them don't. He says that these things are oil filled. And this is how they fill the oil up in this tab here and then seal it shut when they put the lead in it and solder it. And if you look at this guy right here, see how discolored, how creamy that looks right there? It's glossy. Where else did that come from? That did not come from anything up on this set. That came from the capacitor itself. And that's another 600 volt capacitor. You see that blue band right there? That's a uh, yellow, violet, orange. That's a 4730. So let's look that up on the slide o -matic. Let's do a little shaky cam business going on here. All right, let's see. Yellow, violet, orange. So four, seven, three zeros. That's 47 uh, micro microfarads, and that is 0 .047 microfarads. Let's see, and then, uh, let's see can't tell what that fourth band is but the fifth band is blue and that's six so there's a 0 .047 microfarad at 600 volts and on these uh, capacitors if you have a, a fourth fifth sixth band that means the voltage is higher than I think 600 it says here I can't read that too good Yeah, cre uh, capacitors uh, rated less than a thousand volts have only five color bands, and then if it's six bands, it's over a thousand. So anyway, 0.047 to 600 volts. Let's test it. Doing this, doing this with one hand, so also yes, it's going to be shaky cam. I can't do nothing about it, and I'm also coughing over caffeinated so let's see what this one does this is on 250 volts look at this the eye is fully closed well, that's another back capacitor now down on the 25 25 is okay 150 look at 150 though very leaky on 150 Let's see, let's go down and measure the capacitance. Alright, so we're there on the 0.01 to 0.5 scale, the 0.5 is in the middle, and it measures about a little higher than point, a little about 0.047. Capacitance is right, it's just leaky. So I already got two bad caps right off the bat. I'm not sure what this guy is. It looks like brown. I don't know. This is just weird. I can't tell the that second band. I 
usually if it's a point one, oh, that's a black. That's a dark. So that's a point one. See that is a brown, black, violet. I'm sorry, yellow. So let's see. Find a brown. So that's a uh, 100,000 microfarad, micro microfarad, that is a point one. My math is right. So that's a big old point one right there at 600 volts. So already off the bat we got two bad caps. Alright, and here's a 4.7, that's a .047 right there. Another 600 volter. Alright, so let's see here. Let's put it down on 25. Good on 25. Put it up on 150 volts and it's... Uh, That's all bad capacitors. It's full of. Them. Well, anyway, anyway, it's it, you get a whole bunch of capacitors in this sucker. I think this thing's gonna work fine. But I would like to find a uh, manual for this thing. Uh, before I do anything else to it. So, uh, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to see if I can find a manual for this thing and uh, get a parts list and send it to the guy and say, hey, I need you to order these and this is what I need. So, uh, then he can get me the parts for it and we can put the caps in it. Things should be good to go. I would like to check those electrolytics, though. Uh, I'm pretty sure those need changing, too. So, we'll just give him all that stuff. So, hey, this is what I need. So, uh, send them to me. Anyway, uh, I'll bring you back something worth talking about. Talk to you in a little bit. All right. I scoured the internet, and the only thing I found on this uh, utility monitor is this right here. And that doesn't help me a whole lot. Anyway, that's no problem. This thing does work. I'm fairly convinced it's all capacitors because every one of them that I checked down there were bad. Hold that thought. Sorry about that. The, uh, it's the wife. Anyway, uh, where was I? There's uh, no documentation that I can find other than that one piece of paper I showed you. Uh, but that's okay. I know how to read these capacitors and uh, So, um, I'm fairly sure that the numbers are right. And there's almost 28 capacitors in here. Uh, this one's been changed before. That's not a, uh, that's not a Bumblebee anymore. That's a .22 at 600 Sprague. But uh, you can see where it's been uh, J-hooked in. That's okay. I'm going to order all uh, uh film capacitors or uh, the yellow film capacitors that I like to use and I'll just go in and replace all of them because I don't trust them oh and I forgot one I got to get this one right here I got to get this electrolytic right here uh, I wonder how good it is let's find out that is a 100 at 50 microvolt microvolts 100 at uh, 50 volts so let's hook that in. 100 microfarad, 50 volts. I probably, I think I have one actually in stock. All right, so let's see here. 100 microfarad. Let's see, and that's a 20 to 20,000. I'm sorry, 20 to 1,000. 
This shows, now you know how accurate this thing is, but it shows a little over 100, about 110. So that's not bad. Let's check it on 25 volt scale. Actually, a good capacitor. I'm amazed. But you know, I'm already, if I'm going to change out 30, almost 30 capacitors, I may as well just change that one too. My parts list is right here. Basically what I did is I just started at one value and I like coming down here. I got uh, 0.47 right, 0.047 right there. I put a note, I draw, I write the value, 0.047 at 600 volts. Put a line mark down, cross it out, do the next one, do the next one, and, and to find it, in other words, I'd, I'd go looking for 047s in the whole thing. Then I mark them all down, and then as I mark them down, I put a black line in it right there, so I know that I've already counted that one. Anyway, do all that, then I go down the list to find the next one in line here, like uh, this one here, the point one right here. Start a list of point one 600 volts here, and I start marking all those down. And some of them are 200 volts, but you know what? The 600 volts take up as much room now as the 200 volts do the new uh, film caps anyway i do that and i just keep going down the list for every one of them until i get done with all of them so i got 5 10 15 20 21 2 3 4 5 26 axial lead capacitors and then i've got all the filters right here uh two 500s at 25 this is what these were uh, or replaced uh, 150 I got two of those 150 at 200 uh, 4 each 20 at 450 1 each 10 at 350 and 100 at 350 all radials and I'll just make uh, I just go in here and just I'll just leave the cans but I'll just put the uh, I'll put the new capacitors in on terminal strips down here no big deal uh, no big deal so anyway I'm going to compile this list and send this as an email to my buddy there and said he said here order this for me and uh hopefully we'll get the capacitors in we can change them out It'll take me about a day or so change them out and hopefully that'll fix this bad boy uh and we'll go from there so all right that's it for this episode thanks for watching hit that like and subscribe and uh, hopefully we can get this thing going if he'll give me the capacitors, he was supposed to have done that for that Hewlett Packard uh, uh, Nixie voltmeter. He ain't done that yet. So anyway, I will talk to y'all later. Y'all have a great one. Bye bye.